Self-sabotage can paralyze us and keep us from reaching our goals and fulfilling our deepest dreams. But self-sabotage can sometimes be a hard habit to break because it has a strong spiritual component that's rarely addressed or even talked about. Really? That's right. In this video, you're going to learn what self-sabotage really is, the three spiritual reasons why we self-sabotage, and then I'm going to share my simple three-step process to help you overcome self-sabotage quickly. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I publish weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one of the video, what is self-sabotage? So from a psychology and personal development perspective, here's the definition of self-sabotage. It's any behaviors or thoughts that hold you back from achieving your goals and your desires. Okay. So that's what self-sabotage means, but I want to go deeper in this definition because what happens is so many people get stuck in self-sabotage because they don't realize that there's a spiritual component to it. And until you understand the spiritual component, you're not able to heal self-sabotage both on a mind, body, and soul level. All right. So let me give you a definition of what a more spiritual definition of what self-sabotage is. Self-sabotage is a weakness in your energy field that prevents you from creating change in your outside world. And the energy weakness here that I'm talking about in this spiritual definition, the energy weakness is really specific to two parts in your energy field that are creating the weakness. And I'm going to get into those two parts a little bit later in the video, but overall what's happening is your energy field is weaker. The weaker our energy field, the harder it is for us to act in the outside world. Okay. And so the weaker our energy field, the more we self-sabotage. Okay. So I wanted to leave this spiritual definition because I think it really brings in a different perspective on what self-sabotage is. So we can start to address it from a really root cause, uh, issue instead of just focusing on the mind. All right. But before we get into the rest of the video, I want to leave a special side note here. That's very crucial, very, very crucial when it comes to self-sabotage. And that is that self-sabotage is going to become harder and harder as we move forward in this new age of Aquarius. Okay. We're entering what's known as the new age of Aquarius. I've been talking about the age of Aquarius now for a while on my videos. We're moving at warp speed into the age of Aquarius. The onset of the pandemic was really the pull forward of collective consciousness moving in to the age of Aquarius. Now, the age of Aquarius is the energy. There's two particularities that really make self-sabotage uh, harder in this new energy. And that is that the age of Aquarius is the energy is more accelerated and the energy is higher in vibration. Okay. More accelerated and higher in vibration. Well, that's why self-sabotage is going to become torturous because self-sabotage from an energy perspective represents stagnation. Okay. And so stagnation with the age of Aquarius, that's not good. They're not going to go well together and it's going to create a lot of pain in our lives. Now, let me share with you a metaphor of what this looks like so that you can understand why self-sabotage is going to become so torturous for us as we move forward into these new, uh, to these new energies. Okay. So just imagine, let's do an imagination exercise right now. And just imagine that I grab you and I throw you right in the middle of a category five, uh, river. You know, the rapids are category five. It's just white foam everywhere. The, the, the current is so strong and you're dropped into that current. Okay. Now let's say that you first panic and you decide that you're going to grab onto the rocks or you're going to grab onto some sticks, or you're going to grab onto dear life in the middle of those rapids. If you do that, <laughs> what's going to happen to you is a, you're going to rip your arms off because the current is just too strong, or you're going to quickly exhaust yourself and you're going to drown. All right. So when you fall into category five rapids, what you are to do, and this is what, how I was trained as a, uh, doing whitewater rafting, we were trained. If we fall in the rapids, we just have to remember to cross our arms, point our feet downstream and float. Let the current take you. That's how we're trained in whitewater rafting. 
All right. And so eventually what's going to happen is when you do that, you cross your arms, your feet pointed downstream, not your head. So you don't hit your head on the way down, uh, down the stream. That's what you do. You let the water take you. Eventually the rapids will open up and they'll calm down. Okay. And then when the rapids calm down, you can swim. Okay. So this is the way that we're trained when we're doing whitewater rafting. This image that I'm showing you is exactly what's happening with the energy. The energy of Aquarius, this, this new Aquarian age is like a, a, a rapid river. Okay. And self-sabotage represents you trying to hold on to a rock or, or to deal to dear life in the middle of a rapid. It's, it's only going to exhaust you. Okay. So I wanted to leave this message here for you. This is really important. We have got to learn how to overcome self-sabotage and we got to learn how to overcome it quickly because the energy is only going to continue to accelerate and self-sabotage is if we try to self-sabotage in these new energies, it's going to be torturous. We're going to be creating so much chaos and conflict and pain in our own lives. Okay. So wanted to leave this special side note before we move on to the next part of the video. On to part two of the video, the spiritual reasons why we self sabotage. So self-sabotage is a little bit interesting to understand because at first it can seem so counterintuitive, right? Like why would I keep myself away from the goals and the thing, my dreams and the things that I really want? Why would I do that? Why would I prevent myself from reaching my goals or reaching my dreams? It can seem a bit counterintuitive, but there's really an important reason why we do this. There are three things involved in self-sabotage. I'm going to talk about them individually. And, but these three things together is what creates self-sabotage and why it's so hard sometimes to overcome as a habit. So these three things are unhealed wounds plus fear plus weak will. Okay. So let me talk about, <laughs> let me talk about these three things. The first one, let's talk about the unhealed wounds part. All right. Self-sabotage. The, the, the reason that I'm talking about unhealed wounds first is because this is probably the most important. This is the foundational issue with self-sabotage. And that is we have unhealed wounds from the past, specifically a couple of unhealed wounds, wounds around unworthiness and not feeling good enough. Okay. So when I feel unworthy, when I feel like I'm not good enough, then I'm going to be pulling away from my dreams and my goals because I'm not going to think I deserve those dreams and those, those goals. This is a very powerful, very subconscious uh, kind of pattern that's going on that sometimes it, we don't consciously even recognize it. All right. But unworthiness is a really, really problematic issue in many areas of our lives, but especially it leads and it really uh, kind of uh, feeds into the whole self-sabotage the less I like myself, the less I believe I'm worthy of good things and wonderful things, the more I will self-sabotage. An interesting thing about unworthiness is that unworthiness or not feeling good enough, it immediately decreases the frequency of my energy. Okay. So here's a little pro tip. Ding, ding. Here's a pro tip. A negative self image decreases the vibration of your energy. Okay. So why? Because if I feel negatively about myself in any way, I'm going to be bringing my energy down, right? The more that I look at myself as an extension of source energy, the more my energy pulls up, the more I have a negative view of myself, the more my energy pulls down. All right. So unworthiness, really, really creates a problem because get this, the lower the vibration of my energy field, the weaker that energy field will be the higher the vibration of my energy field, the stronger my energy field will be. You see? So can you see from an alchemy perspective, from an energy perspective, how unworthiness by itself starts creating that little, that, that weakness in my overall energy, because it's pulling my vibration down further away from the resonance of my soul which is really high. Anytime I pull my vibration away from the vibration of my soul, I'm really bringing it down. I'm starting to tear myself apart and I'm weakening my energy system. Okay. So, so here's a little bit on how that energy weakness starts by just feeling, having a negative self image and feeling unworthy of the things that I desire. 
Okay, now on to the second reason why we self-sabotage and that's fear, all right? So fear is, fear is a really dense emotion. So as soon as I start emitting fear, I'm pulling my energy field down again. So I'm, I'm, I keep pulling my energy field down, but there are two particular types of fear that come into self-sabotage, all right? Two of them that are very important when it comes to self-sabotage. The first one is fear of change and the second one is fear of loss. Okay, so let's go into the fear of change a little bit. I feel a fear of change anytime this self-sabotage, what it's doing is it's preventing me from moving into the unknown, from moving into something new, from doing something better for myself, from trying to achieve my goals, because those goals represent change. If I have a very controlling ego, if I'm sitting on those wounds of unworthiness, then change is going to be very uncomfortable. The ego loves to be comfortable in sameness. The ego doesn't like change. And so if I allow that fear, to grip me, I'm going to stay paralyzed and that self-sabotage is going to come in. I will self-sabotage more, the more that I'm afraid of change. All right. So that's the first one, fear of change. If I'm afraid of change, I'm going to self-sabotage more. The second one is fear of loss. And this type of fear has to do with the unworthiness piece. Because if I feel fundamentally unworthy, then what's going to happen is I'm actually going to prevent myself from reaching to great things. I'm going to prevent myself from reaching them because my subconscious mind is saying that in the end, I'm going to lose it. And so what the subconscious mind is doing is it's saying better not to have it at all than to have it and lose it. That would be much more painful. And so your subconscious mind is saying, okay, we're not even going to do that. We're just not going to have it. <laughs> okay. So this fear of loss really feeds the self-sabotage a lot. The more unworthy you feel, right? Why would you feel fear of loss? You feel fear of loss because at the end that not feeling good enough, the unworthiness is constantly whispering in your ear. You're going to lose it anyways, because you, you don't deserve to have it. Okay. And so that, that voice is going to feed this fear of loss. It's going to keep you paralyzed because your ego is going to continually say it's better to not have it a lot at, at all than to have it and lose it. Okay. So these are the two fears that are really at play when it comes to self-sabotage. And again, the more I emit fear, the more I'm pulling down my energy system, the more I pull my energy system down, the weaker it gets. The third reason why we self-sabotage is uh, weak will. Okay. Now, before I get into this, when I say weak will, I'm not saying that you're weak. Okay. So not at all. We're not talking about weakness of you as a person. We're talking about weak will and specifically what this weak will means is there are two areas of your energy system that are involved in this. And what will is, will is your movement forward, your desire to make changes, your desire to be a sovereign being, to discern things in your life, to make decisions and to move forward without being impeded by anything that's called will. All right. And there are two centers in your body that are responsible for will two chakras actually. All right. The first one is the third chakra, the solar plexus. Okay. The solar plexus is a really powerful chakra. This is your chakra of what's known as personal will and personal power. This is your chakra of sovereignty. All right. So this third chakra tells you, this is what gives you the will to do things for yourself. Okay. So I'm going to go forward and I'm going to go find a better job than I have now. The reason that you do that is because you have a powerful personal will that's coming from that ter third chakra that helps you go out in the world and make changes for the better for yourself. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the sign of a strong will. All right. When I self-sabotage a lot, that third chakra is weak. So my personal will is weak. As soon as the third chakra weakens, as soon as it gets smaller and weakens, if it contracts and weakens, my entire energy system starts to collapse and I self-sabotage more because I'm not actually, I don't have the energy actually to make the changes in the outside world that I want to see. All right. So that's the first center that's, that's really weak. Um, when I self-sabotage a lot, the second one is the throat chakra. Okay. The throat chakra 
A lot of people think that the throat chakra is just the energy center that's responsible for speaking and communication and speaking your truth. That is true, but the throat chakra is also the place in your system that is responsible for what's known as higher will. Okay. You have two wills in your system. You have the lower will, what's called the lower will or the personal will. This is the will of the human. That's what the one in the third chakra. This is the will of me as an individual in this world. All right. Me as a human human in this world. But then when you get to the throat chakra, now you're talking about a higher will. The throat chakra is connected to the, what's known as the will of your soul or the will of source. Okay. It's a higher will than the human will. All right. That's expressed through the throat chakra. If my throat chakra is weak, my higher will weakens. And again, it's going to weaken my entire energy system. All right. So this is where the weak will comes in is because I'm having problems in third and fifth chakra, the throat. On to part three of the video, how to overcome self-sabotage. So now that you know all about self-sabotage, especially from a spiritual perspective, I'm going to share with you a simple three-step process that I want you to follow. And please follow these steps in order. Sometimes I give you tips and advice and you can, you know, do one tip here and one tip there. But in this particular case, I actually put together these steps, this process in order. So follow them one at a time. The first step is to heal foundational wounds. Okay. So this one is, this is, this is why it's step one, because we have to start targeting that unworthiness and any feelings of not feeling good enough. Okay. So the unworthiness has to be healed. It has to be addressed first because that's really the foundation of self-sabotage is unworthiness. So what I like to do when it comes to unworthiness is first of all, to just become aware. Self-awareness is so important when it comes to the work of self love. All right. And so what I like to do when working on unworthiness is because sometimes unworthiness is so entrenched in, in our entire being that we don't even know we don't like ourselves very much or that we don't think we're deserving of good things. Sometimes we don't even realize it because that voice is so entrenched in our subconscious mind that we can't hear it. And so I like to do exercises of self-awareness. So the one that I'm going to share with you here is it's a journaling exercise. It's a self-awareness exercise, but you're going to ask yourself and you're going to journal a sequence of, of some questions that I'm going to go over with you. Okay. So here are the questions that you're going to ask yourself and you're going to start journaling about. Okay. The first question is why do I feel like I'm not good enough? The second would be, where does this unworthiness come from? And the third one would be, when did I first start to feel unworthiness? So you're going to take some time to ponder these questions. You're going to journal about them. This is a really important exercise in self-awareness. Take your time with this, start writing down all of the details that you can think of. That's going to bring the unworthiness right to your conscious mind. When you finish an answering these questions, then move on to the million dollar question. Okay. So the mill, here's the ding, ding, here's the million dollar question that you're going to end this exercise with. And the million dollar question is this, what would it look like if I felt worthy? <laughs> what, let me repeat that again. What would it look like if I felt worthy? Okay. So what am I doing with this question? I'm forcing your mind to start thinking as if you were already feeling worthy in your present moment. And in order to do that, you have to stretch your mind to go beyond the mindset that it's used to having. And you do that with these types of questions. What would it look like for me if I already felt worthy? <laughs> you see, I'm pulling you into that potential future because if you've heard me talk about the law of attraction, if you've heard me talk about how we create our future, we create our future by vibrating and being in that future in the present moment. Okay. So if I want something, I have to vibrate as if I already had it. Okay. That's how you create a future. You can't be looking around saying, Oh, I don't have that. And I want it. Well, if you don't have it and that's the vibration that you're in of not having, you're never going to get it because <laughs> it's not the same vibration, right? What this question does is it pulls your mind into the future and you can journal about this. What would, what would my life look like if I felt worthy? There's another variation on it. You could, you could journal about that too. Okay. What would my life look like? 
if I felt worthy? Journal about this. How would you feel? Uh, what would you be doing? What would you be doing if you felt completely worthy? The more that you write this down, the more that you go into this type of envisioning exercise, the more you're going to be placing yourself already in that future because you're matching your vibration with the future that you want to create. And you're already healing that unworthiness wound because not only did you bring the unworthiness wound to the surface, but now you're healing it through this beautiful envisioning process of allowing yourself to feel worthy in the present moment. So take some time with this exercise. And then when you're finished with this whole exercise with the self-awareness exercise, if you still want to go deeper on how to heal unworthiness and come into a place of self-love and self-acceptance, I shot a whole video on that and I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to watch after this video. The second step of this process is to lean into fear. Okay. So remember fear was the second part of the equation when it comes to self-sabotage. So when it comes to healing self-sabotage, I have to learn how to work with fear. Okay. Now the way that we usually work with fear, first of all, we don't even like to work with fear. What we do when we feel fear is we recoil from it. All right. We're all trained to recoil from fear. And part of why we're doing that is because our brain has been biologically primed to do that from our evolutionary times. All right. So when we were evolving out in the Serengeti, fear was very useful because what would happen is if I felt fear, I'd recoil from doing something and that, that could possibly save my life. So if I saw a bush moving in the distance, I'd recoil, I'd freeze. And in case that bush was a snake or a tiger or whatever, that recoiling would could save my life. The problem with fear now is that we're not living in the Serengeti anymore. We're living very safe lives. And so now what happens is fear is used inappropriately by the brain. So you actually have to train your brain to understand fear in a different way. And you do that by leaning into fear instead of recoiling. That's really going to, going to give your brain food for thought, because imagine this, if, if you're used to recoiling or paralyzing, when you feel fear, your brain then interprets that as saying that was dangerous, danger, danger, says the brain. She felt fear and she recoiled. That means that thing was dangerous. Well, what would happen if you leaned into fear, your brain would start to think, wait a minute, she felt fear, but she still did it anyways. It must mean it's not dangerous. Okay. So understand how you can train the brain to do this. If you lean into fear, your brain will interpret that as no danger. And what that means is that your brain will get used to, if you feel fear, you're going to do it anyway. So your brain will stop sounding the alarms, the danger alarms. Okay. This is actually quite easy to train. It could take some practice because you have to teach yourself to not recoil instantaneously when you feel fear. And this can take a little bit of self-awareness to start being able to do this, but you can do this. Just be aware that you're feeling fear. Do not let fear control you. The problem with fear is that if we let fear control us, the fear is just going to get bigger. Okay. The more you let fear control you, the bigger it gets, the less you let fear control you, the smaller it gets. So the more that you lean into fear, when you're feeling it, the smaller it's going to decrease in your system. Okay. So leaning into fear means that I learn how to sit with fear. I don't run away from it. I don't reject it. I don't try to distract myself because I'm feeling fear and I don't like to feel it. I feel the fear. I sit with it. I understand it. And then I do it anyways. <laughs> okay. I move right through fear. That's a really important step in being able to heal the fear. The more that you learn how to work with fear, the less you will self-sabotage. And to go deeper on how to overcome the fear of change, which is one of them that I talked about here, that's really important in self-sabotage to go more into the fear of change and how to overcome it. I shot an entire video on that. I'll leave links in the description box below. If you want to watch it after this one, the third step in the process here of overcoming self-sabotage is you're going to develop your will. All right. So we talked about how will weak will was a problem with self-sabotage. Specifically, we talked about issues going on in the solar plexus and the throat chakra. So you're going to have to address those issues. You're going to have to strengthen these chakras so that your energy field gets stronger. So let's talk about the solar plexus first. All right. So for the solar plexus, we're talking about this third chakra. We're going to have to develop personal power and sovereignty. All right. 
the, the solar plexus, the little pro tip here that I want to leave on the solar plexus is that this is a very different chakra from the rest of the, of the main seven ones. Okay. And the reason that the solar plexus is different is because this is a, this is a chakra that responds to practice and, and, and it really is, it feels like a muscle. Okay. The, the solar plexus functions like a muscle. So you need to train that muscle in order to strengthen it. You need to train it with action. The solar plexus isn't a, isn't a chakra that responds very well to just you sitting in meditation and imagining the solar plexus stronger. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a chakra that's very masculine energy. This is a very masculine energy type of chakra, which means that it's an action oriented chakra. Cause that's what the masculine is. All right. So when it comes to developing the, the third chakra, you have to act. Okay. <laughs> and so you have to practice, even if it's just one little step at a time, one action action at a time. So let's say you have this big dream that you, that you always wanted, but you didn't think you can get to, well, you don't have to think about what am I going to do to get to that particular dream, but you can think about one tiny little step that you can take today. That'll get you closer to the dream. All right. That's practicing your solar plexus. All right. Because you're acting in the world. The more that you act in the world, the more that you strengthen this solar plexus. Now to go deeper on how to, um, how to kind of uh, strengthen this solar plexus more than what I've just discussed here. I did a whole video on how to establish strong boundaries and boundaries are of course an issue of the third chakra. So if you want to go deeper on what I said in that video, how to establish boundaries, but how to work with the third chakra deeper than what I've discussed in this video, I'm going to leave links in the description box below for you to watch that video after this one. Now let's talk about the throat chakra. All right. So the throat chakra is a little bit different than working with the solar plexus. Remember that, that third, that throat chakra is kind of where higher will is located. That's how we bring the higher will of the soul and of source energy down into physical form is through this beautiful throat chakra. There are three main ways that I love to use to strengthen the throat chakra. All right. So I'm going to talk about those. The first one is chanting. Okay. So chanting works really well because your vocal cords are actually governed by the throat chakra. So anytime you vibrate your vocal cords, you're working on the throat chakra. So chanting essentially what chanting is, you can do any type of chanting. Some people like to do Om chantings. They like to do different meditations, different Buddhist chants work really well. I like to just use, um, the mantra, the seed mantra of the throat chakra, what's called a Bija mantra in Hinduism. And so basically what that means is that each of the seven chakras, they have an inherent sound that belongs to them. The throat chakra sound is hum. Okay. It's pronounced H A M. That's the Bija of the, of the throat chakra, but you pronounce it hum. Okay. So you can just sit, you can actually look up a soundtrack. You can look up a, a chanting meditation of the throat chakra of the fifth chakra. You could put the earphones on and you could just repeat the chanting. All right. Or you can just sit without any music, take a nice deep breath. Hum. Okay. As soon as you start to do that, that chanting, you're going to vibrate your vocal cords. You're immediately working on the throat chakra. All right. So chanting is a wonderful way to develop that throat chakra. The first one that I wanted to talk to you about. The second way to the, develop the throat chakra is through neck movements. Okay. Now specifically what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about neck movements is you want to address a really large muscle in the human body. That's called the trapezius. Okay. So the trapezius is a large muscle. Sometimes it can give us a lot of trouble because the trapezius can tighten up. It's a muscle that goes all the way from the base of your skull into your shoulders, down your back, almost to the middle of your back. All right. That's how big the trapezius is. This muscle, when it tightens up, it really affects the, not only is it governed by the throat chakra, but when the trapezius tightens up, it really can mess up the alignment of my throat chakra. All right. So when we're talking about neck movements, we're talking about things that really address this trapezius muscle, working with the trapezius muscle. This is a very embodied type of tip that I have for you. So you can work with the trapezius by using neck stretches. So anytime you stretch your neck, you're going to be, anytime that you stretch your neck, you're going to be affecting this trapezius muscle. Okay. So you can do neck stretches. Um, that's, that's one way you can do neck rolls. So you're just rolling your head around. 
Okay, so neck rolls are another great way to get your trapezius muscle to relax. And another one that I love using and that I use almost daily is just a self massage. So you're literally going to cross your arms. You're going to cross your arms or you're just going to use one arm on the other, on each other's shoulder. And you're just going to literally squeeze your own trapezius and you're going to run your hands in a self massage up and down the neck into your shoulders and even down the back if you can reach there. Okay. Self massage is a great, great way to get the trapezius to relax. Or if you don't want to do self massage, go get a massage, have someone actually work on your trapezius muscle for it to relax. The more that you can relax this muscle, the more you're aligning and strengthening that beautiful throat chakra. And the third tip on how to develop this throat chakra is to open up to higher will. Okay. So this throat chakra is the place of higher will. So just become more flexible, become more open to receiving the will of your soul, the will of source. I like to work on this step a lot, um, with just, just opening up to the world, but I like to use affirmations too. So you can use this affirmation that I'll leave you with. You could write it out and just repeat it in the mirror every day. Okay. And you, it could be something like I embody the will of my soul. I love Love that mantra. I embody the will of my soul. That's such a great mantra to open you up to that higher will. So you start channeling that higher will of the soul through this throat chakra. When this throat chakra and the solar plexus get strong, when you start no, learning how to work with fear, when you overcome that unworthiness and you come to a place of self-love, the sabotage, the self-sabotage will just cease to exist in your life. All right, beautiful soul. Now over to you. Let me know in the comments below, where do you feel like you self-sabotage in your life? I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website and download my popular guided meditations. And don't forget to watch these videos that I mentioned in this one. That'll be great viewing for you next. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.